And my name is Pedro uh, Martinez. I work for the global recruitment team um, at a business school. Um, I'm specifically in the business and management pathway or you know, the uh, business uh, group of programs. Um, and my job essentially is to, you know, look for talented professionals all over the world and advise them on which program would, you know, best help them to achieve their career goals and um, ultimately professional goals. Initially, our university referred um, solely to the undergraduate degrees that we have, um, and now it's become an umbrella term that kind of encompasses the entire school, all of the different um, schools for masters, all of our undergraduate degrees, and even um, executive ed education. So it's just the umbrella term for the entire thing. So in anything that's business administration, anything that's a bit more management, so you'd have, for instance, you know, the master's um, in management for more uh, junior candidates, all the way to, you know, the IE Brown, for instance, which is um, an MBA for, you know, high executives in collaboration with Brown University. And then, of course, anything in between, like, you know, the full-time MBA, the online MBA, the executive MBA. We do have a couple options of doing them either in a bilingual or in Spanish format, but for the most part, uh, the entire school is um, English speaking and everything is uh, taught in English. Um, for those of you who might be interested maybe in doing something in Spanish, you can do that for the executive MBA uh, and then you have bilingual options. So English Spanish for the international MBA, full-time MBA and the master's in management. will have, depending on the year, on the program, 5 to 15% um, of Spaniards. So the majority of the classroom is made up of international students, which I think, you know, really uh, brings a lot to the table in terms of diversifying that, you know, that discussion that is had in the classroom and brings a lot of, you know, different cultural scopes and approaches to anything that happens in the classroom, really. So, yeah, the majority of the school is international. Right now, per year, we'll have almost, um, you know, we were, uh, you know, a couple of years back at 5,000, we're almost at 6,000 students yearly. And this is for the entire school, not just the master's program. So, you know, taking into account also um, undergraduate students. So for business, uh, business programs at the end of the year, you know, the, or the intake will have about 15, 16, 17. Um, and we're talking about, you know, up to 2000 students yearly, which is a lot. But again, it's a lot of programs with a couple of the heavy lifters or let's say um, flagship programs of the school, like the International MBA and the Master's in Management, which really have a lot of students um, yearly. Um, an approximate um, number, let's say that, you know, 30 to 40 percent of candidates will be, um, you know, will be successful. So if we're talking about someone who's just, you know, freshly, um, you know, off school, freshly off of college, um, for a lot of the programs, there's no requirement in terms of um, professional experience uh, for some for the MBAs there is. Uh, but yeah, essentially, you'll have to take uh, an entrance exam that can be the GMAT, that can be the GRE or um, our own entrance exam. Um, and from that point on, of course, you need your CV, your diploma, transcripts of your, you know, grades in, in school. Um, you only need two letters of recommendation from, you know, a professor, maybe uh, someone that you've worked with, um, and, and an essay. Um, and of course, you know, for non-native um, English speakers, um, always, you know, you have to take the TOEFL, the IELTS, or um, a similar exam. This test typically um, people will, or candidates will take right after they submit their application or right before, right? So in that kind of, you know, 30, 30 day, um, right before, right after time frame. Um, I think this test um, is different, um, you know, from the GMA or the GRE and that I think it um, reflects or um, evaluates the candidate and situation that might actually arise in the workplace. So I think, you know, really um, replicates things that, um, or, you know, tasks that you might carry out um, daily in, in the workplace, you know, extracting information from uh, databases or, uh, you know, Excel sheets, a uh, bit of numeracy, uh, some, you know, that, that typical um, uh, mail inbox um, exercise, a uh, bit of diagrams, and of course, you know, maybe you know, you're given this information, you have to summarize it and present it to a board. So those types um, of, ex of exercises. We do provide uh, mock questions to give you an idea of what to expect, just so you don't go into the test, uh, you know, completely blindly. 
it's, it's, it's an aptitude test, so it evaluates um, things that you can already do, not things that you should have prepared prior to the test, right? So um, it, ev it evaluates kind of like, you know, your reading comprehension, the speed at which you can work, you know, how quickly you can do math, that kind of thing. So one of the silver linings of COVID is that um, our entire, well, let's call it a silver lining, uh, our entire admissions process right now is online, which means that anyone from anywhere in the world has access to every single step of it without really having to leave uh, their home. Um, so yes, this is now something that you have uh, the possibility of taking from your personal computer and in, in the comfort of your own home, yeah. No, uh, there's a fee for application process, which is 150 euros, but everything is um, everything else is comprised. All three uh, tests are valid. They're both, um, I think, they both give um, a really good assessment on kind of you know how a candidate will perform during the program. Um, that being said. Um, I think, of course, you know, um, a candidate that shows up with uh, a GMAT score or a GIR score or a GIR um, score has already shown that there's a certain level of commitment there and a certain level of, you know, wanting to put in the work uh, for three, four, up to six months because, you know, it's, it's a test that takes a while to prepare. Um, so all three are valid, but um, I think, you know, a GMAT uh, or a GIR always look uh, very good on an application. I'd be lying if I said otherwise. Typically, a regular master's will be full time, so you would have to be in, in Madrid for um, for you know a year, which is you know in no way a punishment. It's a great city to spend a year in. Um, but our global programs um, are um, delivered in a format that allows for students to still uh, keep their jobs. So you will typically have forums during the week and then classes, you know, virtual sessions um, on the weekends. Um, the global word kinds um, kind of, you know, comes from the fact that what we do offer is um, what we call immersion weeks or face to face. Uh, weeks where you know students get to come to Madrid for maybe a week, uh, and we also go to other international hubs. You know, we'll go to Tel Aviv for a week. We we'll go to San Francisco. We we'll go to Shanghai, where they have additional classes. They get to meet uh, professionals, um, students there, and also have some you know company visits uh, while they're there for the week. You can start as early as possible. Um, for our Uniprofile Masters, what happens is that um, candidates will apply in their last year of university. Um, and you know, if they're, if they're successful and get accepted, we offer them a conditional admission, which means, um, yes, you know, we're interested in your profile. I think it'd be a fantastic fit, but that admission is conditioned to you before the start of the program, submitting uh, you know, your, your final diploma, your certificate of completion, you know, you showing that you completed the um, previous level of education, which would be your bachelor's. But, um, but yes, I would definitely encourage them to apply as early on as possible. If you're really um, you know, fixated with the idea of doing a master's program um, you know, at a year or a different school, um, I think the earlier on you apply, the better, just uh, for your own sake. So you have time to go through the process, time to think about relocating to that place, um, maybe applying for financial aid, which of course, you know, the earlier you, you apply, the better. Um, so just for their own peace of mind. For business programs, it's not the most common to have someone, uh, you know, who's done their bachelor's in business at IE, then go ahead and do the program because they'll share some of the same professors, some of the same, you know, narratives, dynamics. Uh, so it might be slightly redundant. Um, but in, in general, I would say that maybe about 15% of our um, bachelor's um, students, you know, end up, you know, doing a different uh, program within IE. I, I always say though that if you do a bachelor's in business administration um, at IE, it's kind of like doing a four-year MBA, which again, is incredible. Um, so there isn't that big of a need to do uh, a master's right after, you know, they typically want to work for a little bit and then see if maybe they want to do a specialized program in, you know, data analytics, um, cybersecurity, something like that. Uh, 
Internally, we have a big list of scholarships, around 30, that we offer for, for our candidates. Uh, just to give you some perspective, about 40% of our candidates will at some point receive some type of financial aid. So it's not far-fetched to think that you could you know, also uh, be you know, a beneficiary of this. Um, out of those 30 scholarships that we offer, people will be able to apply to three different ones. Um, um, ideally, they'll have a conversation with the financial aid team so they can determine, you know, which three make the most sense for them as a person, as a professional. Because of course, you know, uh, different um, scholarships are aimed at different profiles. Um, what I see all the time uh, being offered is, you know, uh, scholarships maybe 15, 20, 25, up to 40% and, and really good cases. Uh, so that's definitely an option. Other options that we have, the option of loans um, as well, and uh, the option of um, fellowships, which essentially, you know, in, in exchange for, for this aid, you collaborate with a department within AE for the year, which again, is also fantastic in terms of being able to network and also, you know, have a little bit of professional experience while you do in the, with it, while you do in the program. We have a dedicated department for this purpose. Our student services department handles anything, uh, you know, from visas to, um, you know, um, accommodation to maybe opening a bank account, getting a phone number, anything like that. I'll walk you through the entire years got to Madrid. How do you go about everything? We even offer Spanish courses, you know, like a crash course before the program starts. Um, what a lot of people do is they'll come for a month before the program starts. So, you know, you spend the month of um, August having um, Spanish classes in the morning and in the afternoon, maybe you go flood hunting um, or, you know, you open that bank account, you get kind of like settled in. Uh, so we definitely offer that help. I think the AI environment is very special and in, in that we're uh, kind of a bigger school with um, a lot of diversity. So I don't think they realize uh, the amount of different profiles they'll, they'll meet, uh, the amount of different nationalities, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the, you know, all the different approaches that uh, people have to doing things in the classroom, doing things in business. Um, so for me, it was an incredibly, you know, eye-opening or, you know, let's call it mind-blowing experience in that, uh, for instance, for me, my group, um, I was paired up with um, an Indian girl who was go working for Boeing in Dubai, a uh, Lebanese guy who was working for a bank, a um, German guy who was working for a logistics, logistics company, a um, guy from Kenya who was uh, in pharma, and then a guy from Singapore who was in Apple, you know. Um, had I not done this program, apart from all the academics and kind of like, you know, the, um, the, um, the understanding of everything that goes, goes on in a company, I would have never had access to all of different points of view, all these contacts, uh, all this know, you know, uh, know hows uh, that I was able to have. So I think that'll, that'll really surprise you um, and really um, enrich you know, your education and the way you'll approach things in business and in life in general from that point forward. I always, I always tell um, candidates, um, one, make the most of every single item within the application. Uh, you, there's an essay for a reason, that's you know your time to shine and to tell us why you're an incredible candidate, what sets you apart from the crowd. Um, and two, I think it's incredibly important to go into the application with a very clear journey in mind. And what I mean by that is that um, the idea of doing an MBA or a master's in business, a master's in general is very aspirational. Um, so I think ultimately the message you want to get out of that is, um, or you, know, you need to be able to show the, the committee, um, this is what I've done up until now. This is why I need the program. This is what I wanted to, why I want to do the program. And this is what I plan on doing with the program once I graduate, you know, that kind of like journey of development or that journey that you want to embark on that needs to be crystal clear. For any candidates out there, prospective candidates for, for IE, um, I hope to see you on the process at some point and hopefully down the line on campus. Um, obviously, you know, me, anyone, anyone from the team would be more than happy to help you with any questions, um, any coaching, any, uh, you know, um, kind of like um, advice in terms of what program to do, how to approach this. Uh, so, of course, feel free to reach out. And again, I hope to see you in Madrid very soon.